Hello, this is Jeffrey Fox, the instructor of Big Data Applications and Analytics. And um, we're um, doing the data science curriculum of the School of Informatics and Computing. And this is lesson 14 of unit two, the course motivation. And it decides, describes software ecosystems. And in particular, the discussion is parallel computing and map reduce, but actually has a somewhat more general focus than that. Here we see a beautiful uh, mosaic of uh, various cloud things from companies and um, capabilities, services. Here we have a no SQL databases, um, management and monitoring, uh, Hadoop, and so on, and various analytics and so on. And uh, open source, do we have Spark, Hadoop, Yarn, what have you. Just also, just the richness of the cloud world is illustrated in an amazing fashion. And lots of this stuff are software, not all of it there, but they're all new software and put together in different ways to, to provide services. So we can look at this in a slightly more modest fashion. Well, produce this uh, collection here produced by Supin, uh, one of my students, and Judy Chu. And here we have 17 layers and 266 software packages. Four of the layers are cross-cutting, 13 of the layers are sort of layers. Uh, the cross-cutting does things like the coordination, security and privacy monitoring. And then we have, from the bottom, we have infrastructure as a service. DevOps, the actual automation of software, interoperability. Um, where we see things like Akai, the uh, open grid forum uh, technology. In the DevOps, the, below that we have things, famous things like Docker and Chef. File systems in here, that has uh, the Hadoop file system and Lustre. Uh, we have uh, resource management, Mesos and Yarn from uh, Apache. Things like uh, Moab and Slum from HPC. Data transport, we have famous things like BitTorrent and Globus Online, which is good FTP, and, and things like Flume and Skook from Apache. File management, IRODs and all sorts of file uh, standards there. NoSQL as a huge uh, representation. SQL is, of course, a dominant technology. These are various data manipulation uh, uh, technologies, including um, Memcached, which is the famous uh, caching software. And then we have in communication software, programming, higher level programming, applications analytics. And then at the top, we have workflow and orchestration. Um, so this is um, a big challenge. How do we cope with 266 uh, environments? Well, my approach is DevOps. Without DevOps, we're not going to survive. We need to automate as much of this as possible so that you can take some script and just deploy the script and it all happens automatically for you. So of course, you don't actually need 266 because there's some duplication. And uh, if you focus on a particular area, you don't need everything. And here is some selection with monitoring. We do Inca, Ganglia, Negios. Infrastructure as a service, we have uh, Amazon Azure, OpenStack, LibCloud, the library, the library. Cloud Mesh is our own DevOps tool. But the more important uh, public tools, Chef, Puppet, Docker, Cobbler. I mentioned these file systems already and these cluster management systems. Zookeeper is a critical coordination technology used, for instance, in Storm. Data management, uh, here there are no SQL databases, and here we have SQL. Um, in memory, we've already pointed out that's very important. Uh, Gartner's already highlighted that. Parallel programming, we have a dupe and spark and things at the low level, storm for streaming. High level of Hive, which is SQL on HBase and, and a dupe. And Pig, which is a higher level version of uh, a dupe. 
and then, or MapReduce, I should say. Then we have Data Analytics, Mahout Library in Apache, R, famous library, ImageJ in, in image processing, Scalar back in HPC. Workflow, we have some class, we have Python as a sort of classic um, language based workflow. Pegasus and Kepler HPC systems in Apache, we have Tears, Crunch, uh, things like, and Flume, and, uh, Flume Java and so on as, uh, as classic uh, as coming from Apache. Apache is likely to have a major impact on the workflow environment in my, in my opinion. But it hasn't quite happened yet because Apache is only just producing tools in this area. All right, now let's get back to parallel computing. And actually, this is a review of things I already said. We have high performance computing, lots of low, supports low latency messages, tends to use message brushing interfaces, the technology runs, <coughs> runs just with lots and lots of cores, 100,000, a million cores. And they are all these uh, facilities run at 100% utilization in batch mode, so you have to wait a while to get your results back. They tend to be fault fragile because they run in very robust data centers, but the software ecosystem does not tolerate faults very well. Um, okay, so then we have MapReduce, which has um, um, asynchronous maps. It's just pointed out here that. Um, one feature of MapReduce is MapReduce is very tolerant of jobs taking some jobs out by a job taking longer than others. HPC is totally intolerant of that because if one node holds up all the other nodes and the other nodes fall idle, and then you have a huge cost. In MapReduce, where things are written to disk, you don't see that problem. Um, so MapReduce is actually much more tolerant of not only hardware problems, but also software and load balancing issues. And uh, there's the very important map only special case, which is pleasingly parallel. We then pointed out that the iterative map reduce fell between those two, uh, two, two limits. They take map reduce and cache results in between steps. And they support the same single program multiple data. That's what it says up here. Programming model, which you use in parallel kernels like linear algebra, clustering, and other data mining examples. So we have. Um, a relatively clear situation with clouds and HPC and somewhat, and technologies which are in between. Here is a nice picture of MapReduce. We have instruments producing data going to disks. Those disks are then supported by computers. So here we have the computers doing the maps, uh, mapping the data. Uh, we have one set of maps, then we do a reduce phase, another set of maps. Reduce phase, another set of maps, a big reduce phase, and then the final reduction phase before you get the answer to the users who make then decisions. Here we have DIKW, data information, knowledge, wisdom, and the final decisions are being made and made here by the at the portal. So the next slide you need to just look at, it's um uh, done by uh, Salia and um, Judy Chu, and it uh, uses drinking, uh, t converting an apple into a juice as an example of a map. This is a map, and that map, of course, in this case, is done by a knife, which cuts and then a blender. It has actually has two steps, or two maps: knife to cut up the apple. That's this, and then a blender to, to take the apple slices and make the juice. So this is sequential. One apple runs through the process. Then we could try to uh, do parallel computing for this. And here we show a nice picture of parallel computing for, for doing juice production. Starting with a collection of um, data sets. These are the initial data sets over here which are mixtures of three fruits. And those fruits are, are the keys, and then the values of, of the initial apples and the slices of the apples. And then you get at the end this uh, bottled uh, juice. So this is an illustration of how MapReduce works. Here you have the maps, 
here you have the, re the reductions as you um, join all the join all the either pure pure juices or mixed juice in the particular ratios. And this uh, mapping and and how it's implemented is sort of meant to illustrate in a qualitative fashion some of the key ideas of map reduce. So thank you very much. That's the end of lesson 14.